So I'm just noticing some new features or at least functionality or updated functionality inside Perplexity. And this is something that I don't think any other large language model can do right now. Uh, so I have noticed over the last couple of weeks uh, kind of uh, Perplexity's ability to use and generate Python has improved, but also its ability to pull in publicly available information uh, from APIs and I'm like, yo, is this a thing? I looked it up, a couple other people noticed it. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you real quick on today's AI and Five, how you can fetch real time data and visualize it inside of perplexity. Like I said, something you can't do technically right now inside other large language models. All right, let's jump in, take a quick look. If you're new here, my name's Jordan Wilson, and this is AI in Five. I run Everyday AI. We're a daily live stream podcast, free daily newsletter, helping everyday people learn and leverage generative AI. So this is kind of a niche one, but really, really cool. Uh, so we've done other videos on this channel before uh, that, as an example, uh, talked about Perplexity's new integration with Taco or Taco, I'm not sure. Let me know if you're Taco or Taco, which one it is. Uh, but essentially, uh, depending on how you prompt, and we did a review of this, it was a little finicky, uh, Perplexity would generate uh, kind of interactive charts in with real-time data. However, that was really just limited to a couple of things that uh, Taco or Taco uh, had access to, but not everything. Uh, so just notice that by calling out and telling Perplexity to install certain Python libraries and using publicly available APIs, you can actually do a lot. All right, so also uh, got to shout out this person here on Twitter. When I was searching, I'm like, is this a thing? Uh, ran into this post. Um, so yeah, good job, uh, Phil. Phil won here. All right, so let's just jump in, quickly show you uh, what this is and maybe what you could use it for. So as an example, uh, I'm going to say install a library. So again, we're talking about uh, Python libraries. Uh, to get the stock market returns of Apple over the last 20 years, then use it to make a chart. Okay, pretty simple. All right, and, and probably what you're thinking is, oh, you could do this in any large language model. Well, no, actually you can't. And I'm gonna show you here in a second, but I wanted to do this first one, uh, just run it down for you. Uh, so you can see here, Step by step, I mean, we'll see if this actually works. I've run the same prompts multiple times and gotten uh, different uh, different results here. So uh, it looks like this time did not work. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the uh, same one here. I'm just gonna add the word visual. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, uh, and execute. Okay, so similar thing here. So yeah, like I said, it's a little finicky sometimes. I mean, that's the nature of generative AI. Sometimes running the same prompt 10 times will get you nine different responses, might get you one or two different responses. It really depends. Uh, so had this working just fine uh, before we started this video. So we'll see if it, if it runs it this time. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and get a couple others ready. And again, these are ones that had worked previously, so we'll see if it if it runs it this time. So you'll see here it's installing the Y Finance um, uh, library there. It's running the Python. So let's see if it actually finishes it. So it didn't finish it this time. Thanks a lot, Perplexity. Right, you know, I was doing a test right beforehand, uh, and it worked fine. So let's try another one. So I'm saying install a library to get real time currency exchange rates, then display the current exchange rate from USD to Euro create it as a graph or chart and make it visual. So now we can see exactly uh, what Perplexity is doing in the pro search here. So it's looking up the correct Python library. It says it's installed it, right? So it's kind of code interpreter right here. It installed the library. Then it's trying to fetch uh, the data and then it's going to create a graph or chart. Let's see if it did it right this time. All right, so let's see. It didn't work again, y'all, I swear. You know, I try to do these uh, unedited, unscripted. Um, I wanted to at least try it beforehand uh, because, yeah, I was getting some, um, you know, some finicky results. Uh, so here I'm trying it the exact same prompt. So these prompts uh, literally verbatim worked previously. I didn't want to have to do a bunch of editing and just show you real in real time. But that's, that's the reality. Okay, so here we go. Perfect. So it worked the second time. 
So here it is. It is 0.9. That is the uh, exchange rate. So uh, it worked after one or two tries. So I'll do the exact same thing in chat GPT. And it is not going, I don't think it's going to work. Uh, right. So that's the thing right now, uh, even though code interpreter is amazing inside of chat GPT, it doesn't always work the same. All right. We'll give that a second and let's try, uh, let's try one or two other ones here. Uh, I, I, I like this concept here. So I'm saying install a library to scrape the latest news headlines from the hacker news website, then make a simple, but visual graph of the five headlines So five headlines from hacker news. All right. So, uh, I'll show you what that is. Here, we'll see if we can get it, hopefully get this one to work. All right, so here is Hacker News from Y Combinator. If I zoom in here, you can see some of the uh, most recent news stories. So again, we are having it install a web scraping uh, script and hopefully go uh, create a graph for this. All right, so let's see if it did it correctly here. And again, you can always look at the step-by-step. -step. So it searched for the correct Python library, uh, in the programming mode, it installed it. There it is. Beautiful soup. That's the one I was hoping it would do. Then it scraped the latest headlines from Hacker News website. Uh, there we go. And we'll see if it created a simple but visual graph. So it looks like it said failed to gather information. So let's see if it actually did it. Y'all, generative AI can be a, a little frustrating sometimes because I did the exact same prompt. And this is actually uh, what I had on my screen uh, to start this video, uh, actually, and uh, now it's not working. Uh, such is life, right? Such is life. Uh, so let's see if this next attempt did anything, and we'll check back on ChatGPT. Uh, so yes, ChatGPT was not able uh, to do this. Here we go. All right, so let's check back in with perplexity and see if we can get it to uh, display those five headlines from Hacker News. So interesting, it did uh, it did not get it, but here is the one that we started with, and you'll see I ran the exact same uh, prompt. That's the fun part of generative AI. Uh, you can get finicky results sometimes, but scroll down here, you'll see it did the same thing, but it actually successfully finished. Um, and then I can go ahead, can't really zoom in on that, so I'll just copy and paste the, uh, the image there. But there you go, it says the, the anatomy of a 2 a.m. mental breakdown, 1953 U.S. Navy training. I go over here. There we go. So again, a little finicky um, in my testing. It was working uh, super. Um, it was working super consistently. So uh, not sure what's going on. Let's try one more for fun, shall we? Uh, now that this video uh, is already off the rails, uh, let's see another one. So I'm saying uh, install a library to track cryptocurrency pro prices in real time. Then display the current price of Bitcoin as a chart or graph. Make it visual. Uh, so same thing. It's installing the Y Finance Python library. Uh, then next, it's going to fetch the price um, and then hopefully create a graph. So we kind of saw in ChatGPT, it's not going to work. Uh, Claude has an amazing, um, an amazing uh, feature, and I'm running the same thing because you'll see Claude does not have access to the internet, right? So it can't do anything with real-time data. So it can do something with uh, data that's in its current training uh, set, but that's not real-time. So you'll see right here, it's only going up till what? This is a year ago, right? This is literally a year ago, which this is not helpful. Uh, so obviously, uh, you know, Claude and even ChatGPT have different pros and cons, but when this works, consistently, uh, which here's our response. So I'm glad this one worked. When it works consistently, this is actually an extremely powerful uh, tool that you can use. So here we go. This is uh, this is up to date uh, current Bitcoin prices. So I can't, um, unfortunately, this version is not interactive, but we can test this. So it looks like it has our um, Bitcoin price there at just over 58.7. So let's just see Bitcoin price 58.9. So yeah, pretty, pretty up to date and accurate. All right. So uh, I hope this one was helpful again, kind of niche, but pretty cool if it works consistently. So uh, have you tried this? Let me know a really cool feature on how you can actually sometimes, well, sometimes when it works, uh, both install Python libraries, execute 
them and grab real-time data all with perplexity. All right. Hope this was helpful. Yeah, maybe it wasn't. Sometimes they go off the rails, but let me know. Go to your everydayai.com, sign up for the free daily newsletter, and we'll see you back for another AI in five. Thanks, y'all.